everybody, Dearly here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Code Realize Guardian of Rebirth. Now we are doing St. Germain's bad ending and his extra scenario, so let's get this bad ending over with, and then we can get happy again by reading his extra scenario. So you can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Right, we have to reject her terms. I... I want to at least ask, is there any other option? As I said, this is as far as I can budge. But there's no way St. Germain and I can defeat Guinevere in our current condition. Guinevere is strong. St. Germain could barely fight her on equal terms in perfect condition. Now that he's lost his immortality, his chances of victory are extremely low. With that in mind, I tried to get her to agree to a different condition. That's the point. I'm asking you to accomplish something impossible. Omnibus says this quietly, not giving an inch. Whether you'll be able to overcome this turn of events or not, that's all I want to know. There is no other option. I nod quietly, taking this fact to heart. Alright. Then... I shall take you to St. Germain now. The instant Omnibus says this, the area around us becomes veiled in whiteness. By defeating Guinevere, we'll be able to overturn Omnibus's prediction. Even though I am faced with an impossible task, I can see St. Germain. I can help him. These are the only thoughts that fill my head. My hope is that you can prove that there exists a future, other than what I can see. That would mean salvation for me as well. What am I doing? I'm sorry, I could have forwarded a lot of this. Oh well. Alright, so here is the part where things are different. The combatants have exchanged the greatest blows they could muster. Eventually, ever so slowly, one of your sways and falls to one side. Her armor makes a loud clatter as she crashes to the ground. She lies there, motionless. At first, I can only stare at her in shock, but gradually, relief begins to emerge in my heart. Did he win? I look over at St. Germain, and I finally notice that something is wrong. St. Germain! What? St. Germain collapses to the ground. I rush towards him, then cover my mouth in horror as soon as I see his body. It can't be. He is not merely wounded. An enormous gash has been hideously carved into his side. No matter how I look at it, it's clear that he will not survive this. But, even in this condition, he looks at me with a smile. <laughs> Looks like this is the end of the road for me. I don't know what to say in response, and my lips tremble. I have one last favor to ask you. Will you smile for me? I take a breath, then wipe away my tears. I don't know if I can smile, but if that's what St. Germain wants, is this good? Am I smiling enough? Yes. It's wonderful. I love you and your smile. Those are St. Germain's last words. St. Germain. He doesn't respond. I want to keep smiling, but it's become difficult. I can't bear this. St. Germain. The words tumble from my quivering lips out of my control. There's no point in anything if you're not alive. There's no point if you're not with me. Unable to contain my emotion, I embrace him as tightly as I can. Maybe if I do this, I can stop his body from turning cold. How long? How long do I cry? My heart grows numb from the fatigue and sorrow. I hear the sound of a wheelchair. Ah, it must be Omnibus. But I... I don't even feel like raising my head. 
I suppose my predictions don't always come true. Although she speaks with her usual tone, but her voice is tinged with a hint of pity. It looks like a draw, but the two of you did most assuredly defeat Guinevere. It's no use now. St. Germain has died, leaving me with little reason to live. I continue to embrace him as I look up at Omnibus. Her eyes are filled with kindness, making it impossible to hate her. I'll hate her for you. Omnibus. After some silence, the words that escape me are as heavy as lead. You know everything, don't you? Then there's one thing I want to know. I'm a monster and a doll, but if I die, will I be able to go to the same place as St. Germain? Omnibus stares at me for some time, then slowly replies. Yes, I'm sure of it. She looks so sad when she answers, but it makes me so happy. Even if it is a lie, right now it's all that I need to hear to be saved. She looks at me as if deep in thought for a moment, then speaks. There is another path I can show you. I don't even have the strength to reply, and simply continue staring at her. Ardia, join idea. I'm prepared to welcome you as an apostle. What? This incident has cost me many of my apostles, and you have the potential to become a member of IDEA. I shall put you under my watch, and when the time comes, I will take your life for you. Until then, will you let me be the keeper of your life? My first reaction is to decline. I want to ask her to kill me right here, on the spot. But... The weight of St. Germain's body in my arms won't let me. St. Germain's wish that I keep smiling echoes in my mind. As I continue to embrace his body, I smile back at his still smiling face. St. Germain, it's all right. I won't do anything to make you sad. After a moment of silence, I look up at Omnibus again. All right. What? Wouldn't this make him sad? Because, I mean, she's basically gonna be doing what he was doing and, like, assassinate people. And then she won't be happy. <laughs> but, for now, will you let me have some time alone with him? She looks at me as if about to say something. But she decides not to reply. She nods, then appears to say something to Guinevere's body nearby. Then she leaves. Nothing remains but silence. I embrace him even more tightly. Saint Germain, there's so much I want to tell you. I just want to follow you now and tell you everything. If this is the conclusion, then I must accept it. And even if it's impossible now, until the day comes when I can smile from the bottom of my heart as Saint Germain wishes, I'll continue living. But what if that never comes because you can't be with him? A cold wind blows through the night air, passing by a hill that overlooks London. I'm alone on this hill, looking down on the countless lights that adorn the city. The London nightscape looks like a starry sky from this vantage point. But the lights of St. Germain's mansion no longer number among those stars. I frown to myself at finding myself searching for them, then gently close my eyes. How many years has it been since I was last in London? I wonder what Lupin and the others are up to now. I wonder if they had all been able to return to where each of them were meant to be. After I was separated from the others in that forest, I have never attempted to contact them, not even once. What? Why not? That's horrible! They were your friends! It would be dangerous to establish communication with them. Contact with outsiders must be kept to a minimum unless necessary for a mission. Part of St. Germain's mission was to interact with people, so he was operating under an exemption. But we apostles of idea, working in the shadows of history, must abide by this rule of solitude. That doesn't make any sense to me. It feels like a rule they just decided to throw in for the heck of it for this ending. And what's more... 
I don't want my friends to see what has become of me. Well, that makes sense. It would be easiest for me if they could simply believe that I was dead. In reality, I'm as good as dead in any case. My main assignments right now are to assist the other apostles on their own missions. There is so much for me to do, from gathering information to covertly breaking into secure locations. It's ironic that what Lupin and the others have taught me is helping me now. Feeling nostalgic. I turn around at a sudden voice. Guinevere is standing behind me with her helmet off. Nostalgic? What do you mean? You lived in London with your friends. I thought you might be indulging in reliving some memories. Yes, in a sense I suppose I am feeling somewhat homesick. It would be a lie to say that I didn't want to see them again. I never told any of them about me or St. Germain. I know. If we were truly friends, then I would probably be obliged to give them a proper update about my situation. But I am an apostle of idea now. Unnecessary contact is unacceptable. Oh, come on, don't tell me she's now in the storyline deciding they weren't really friends. I mean, I don't like it. It's so annoying. They were definitely good friends in all of the storylines. You can't say now that she doesn't feel like she was truly friends with them. I say this firmly, and Guinevere nods. It was none of my business. Sorry for asking. No, it's all right. I don't have time to spend reminiscing about the past anyway. We have another big mission waiting for us. I check to see that I have everything I need, then look back out over London. I'm teaming up with Guinevere for this mission. A scientist who would plunge the world into great chaos is making preparations within the city. We've been ordered to assassinate the scientist and completely destroy his research. It doesn't really look like you've gotten used to these missions yet. You're right, there's still a lot weighing on my mind. But I think I need to become accustomed to this new way of life. I watch as Guinevere tilts her head, then I smile. I will obey Omnibus's orders now that I'm part of IDEA, but I will be the one to decide how to carry out my missions. If, if I find anyone like me who falls outside of the correct path, I want to give them the chance to be saved. You're saying that you'll do this even if it means disobeying Omnibus. I have no intention of disobeying her, but Omnibus is not always correct. Her predictions can be incorrect, too. Saint Germain gave his life to prove this to me. That is why, if there is something I can disagree with, I'll bring it up with Omnibus. I will observe the situation for myself and make a decision. I don't think the other apostles will take a liking to this method, but that's how I intend to be as an apostle. That seems very like you. Guinevere nods slightly, then looks up at the stars in the sky. The real stars. Well then, shall we get started? Yes, Guinevere. You can just wait for me to contact you, as usual. Be careful. I nod in response, then start walking towards London. Long ago, I walked along this path with Lupin and Impey. Then I met Victor, Van Helsing, and St. Germain. Every step I take causes different memories to surface. All the adventures I had with my friends and with St. Germain. That day when St. Germain tried to kill me under the orders from Idea. The moment we decided to fight our fates together. When St. Germain showed me what it was like to feel a person's warmth despite it hurting him. Ah, all the times he tried to kill me. I wipe away a single tear from the corner of my eye before I can fall. I stop in my tracks and look up at the sky to keep more tears from following. The stars shine just as brightly as when St. Germain and I had looked up at them. St. Germain, someday, when I finished all my missions and I'm able to fall into an eternal sleep, 
welcome me with a smile. When the time comes, I want to be able to tell you how hard I've been working. That the life he saved wasn't put to waste. I want to honor his wish that I keep smiling. I fix my face into a mask-like smile and slowly begin walking once more. That's not what he would have wanted for you. He wouldn't want you to go around with a fake smile. He wants you to actually be happy. I think her joining idea was really stupid. And not telling her friends what happened was horrible. Because, I mean, now they don't know what happened to her or St. Germain. That's horrible not knowing what happened. Ugh. Also, a couple other discrepancies. Because, I mean, I, I understand... Well, Omnibus apparently is Eve, you know, from Adam and Eve, the creation story. Um, but I understand her having the knowledge. She ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So I guess I can understand, in a way, her ha being able to see something about the future because it was linked to God somehow. However, it does not make sense that she would have powers to give people immortality and healing and stuff like that. Where did she get those powers? Why? And then also what happened to Adam? Because, you know, she said she loved Adam, but I, I think in her ending... They didn't actually talk about what happened to him, right? So how come... And he ate from the from the tree too, so why isn't he just like Eve? And also, during the fight with Guinevere, Cardia's horologium started transforming, right? So why did it just suddenly stop? That doesn't make any sense. They didn't do anything to make the horologium transformation stop. So why did it... I don't know. That doesn't make any sense. It's just... Uh. Okay, and then... Why? Why? Cardia has kissed everybody in the game except for Van Helsing. It's not fair. I want to kiss Van Helsing. <laughs> Lupin's the only guy left, and I'm pretty sure he's going to get his kiss because I have the feeling he's probably going to. I mean, it's not a spoiler because I'm just guessing here, but I mean, he is kind of like the title character, so I have the feeling that he's going to end up curing her of her poison, and I'm almost 100% sure that he's going to get a kiss from her. So why can't Van Helsing have his kiss? I want my kiss with Van Helsing. Come on, people. We need some fan art or something, at least. It's not fair. <sighs> Alright, so now that we're done with that horrible bad ending, and I'm done ranting, let's go to the memory trunk, which shouldn't really be memories exactly. Get to extras, and we will see St. Germain's happy little extra story. It happened a little while after I came to London. Wait, so this is before they got together then? Oh, I want it to be after the end of the game. I'm heading over to St. Germain's room, finding comfort in the sunlight shining into the hall. I'd been in the dining hall earlier, planning to eat lunch, but St. Germain was nowhere to be seen. As I sat there wondering where he was, Impy explained to me that it was probably that. St. Germain had ordered a piece of art to be shipped to the mansion. I've been told that it comes from an island nation in the Far East. He must have really taken to it, since as soon as the piece arrived, he shut himself away in his room. It must be an amazing piece of work if he's so enamored by it that he's forgot to come down to lunch. That was the gist of Impy's explanation. I'm heading over to the Count's room now to tell him that lunch is ready, but... To be honest, I'm very curious about this art piece that has so captivated him. I wonder what it is. My legs speed up as I think about it. When I arrive at St. Germain's door, I knock lightly at it. St. Germain, lunch is ready. While I'm awaiting a response, my anticipation only grows as I think about the piece of art beyond the door. After a while... Sorry, I'm in the middle of something. Could you come in? I'd been planning to ask to see his new art in any case, so I'm glad he invited me in. Alright, I'm coming in. The moment I open the door, a faintly sweet scent tickles my nose. I look around, trying to locate the Count. Ooh. I want to see more. St. Germain is standing in the middle of the room. 
He must be in the middle of changing. Seeing his normally covered back revealed like this makes me feel awkward. I'm sorry, but I'm still getting dressed. I can see that, but I'm surprised. Is that an article of clothing? It's rather odd. Oh, this. Saint Germain looks down at the cloth that wraps around him and smiles, looking satisfied. This is a garment from the Far East, called a kimono. It's quite an exquisite piece. I see. I nod, then take another look at him. Should I stay outside? Why do you ask? Ladies and gentlemen should always be aware of the time and place. They shouldn't show their bare bodies to one another. You told me that's proper behavior for a lady. I got a trophy for that. <laughs> I'm surprised that you remember, but that's not an issue right now. I have no qualms about showing my skin to you. Ah, oh, but of course that's only if it doesn't offend you. I don't mind. Why would it offend me to see your skin? <laughs> this is proof that you are pure and innocent. I'd like to see you blush. But we'll have to say that as a treat for some other time. Another time? Why would I blush when I see your body? I can't really see that happening. <laughs> Perhaps this might be a possibility in the future. I'm a little curious, but if Saint Germain says he'll save it for later, I won't probe it any further. Then I notice that smoke is drifting faintly through the room. The thinly trailing smoke must be the source of an odd scent that I'm smelling. Incense? Saint Germain, what is this smoke? Ah. Oh. It's a kind of incense known as oko. Oko? In Asia, there is a custom in which they burn scented wood in order to soothe the nerves or as a form of personal perfume. And this smoke is one of those types. You're right. This scent does make me feel calm, I think. At any rate, Saint Germain, why haven't you put that robe on yet? He gives me a troubled smile. Actually, he just stopped smiling. <laughs> ah, I apologize. I was actually in something of a predicament. He doesn't know how to wear it? Actually, I thought he was just enjoying showing off his body to her. Now, this kimono, I've tried putting it on, but I can't quite figure out how. I see. I can help. I want to do what I can to help him, but I'm also a bit curious. My desire to see Saint Germain wearing this kimono grows. I feel like he'd look very good in it. Hmm, you have a point. It may be better to have a helping hand, rather than being frustrated by myself. May I ask for your help, Miss Cardia? Alright, I'll try my best. I gladly nod in response to St. Germain's request. St. Germain stands in the room with the kimono draped over his shoulders, and I closely observe the shape of the garment. This hole looks like it might be a sleeve. I think your arm goes through here. Uh, yes, I figured out that much, but... He puts his arms through the sleeves. Now for the hard part. Strange, the shirt is too long to be tucked into your pants, but there are no buttons to secure it. Uh, yes, that is the problem. I've read quite a few documents from the Orient. I'm very disappointed in myself for not being more knowledgeable about this. Hmm, this is hard. Why don't you take it off so we can start over from the beginning? Yes, let's do that. Just as I am taking a hold of his kimono, I hear a knock at the door. Hey, Sinky G! Did she come to get you? You'd better hurry or your meal's going to get cold. I reflexively look up at Saint Germain when I hear Impy's voice from outside. Saint Germain... Let's get Impy's input on how to wear this kimono of yours. Ah, I see. That is a good idea. Yes, maybe he knows something about it. I see Saint Germain nodding like he is enjoying this, then look over to the door. <laughs> He's playing a joke on Impy, using Cardia's cluelessness. Impy, my hands are full. Can you come help us? Huh? Cardia? 
So you are in CDG's room. What is it? I'll help with anything. Impy swings the door open, then freezes when he sees the two of us. What's the matter? Get over here, Impy. <laughs> Impy, come over. Don't mind me. G Guardia, why are you taking Saint G's clothes off? W what's going on? Impy grows bright red, then all the color drains from his face, and he turns completely pale. <laughs> My God! Huh? Impy, why'd he run away like that? Did he think he was being invited into a threesome? <laughs> I wonder why as well. St. Germain just smiles his best smile. Oh, I love it. You little sadist. <laughs> oh man, that was so short! And, and he wasn't naked enough. Everybody else showed more skin than you, St. Germain. All I got to see was his back. And it still had clothes on it. We just got to see his naked shoulders, that was all. I guess that is more than he usually shows in his normal outfit, though, so... But I love his normal outfit! He is the best... His, he has my favorite outfit out of everybody in this game. He looks awesome. I would love to have a St. Germain figure. It would be really cool. Alright, so with St. Germain being officially done, that's all four other side guys, and like I said, Lupin has been unlocked, and uh, so next episode will be the beginning of Lupin's route, and I know lots of you have been looking forward to him. A lot of people asked me to do Lupin next, even from the very beginning, but I kept saying, you know, I couldn't play Lupin until you unlock him after playing everybody else, but now it's finally time. Sorry for the wait, and we'll get started with him tomorrow morning. So I hope to see you there or in some of my other future videos, and I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye bye everybody. <laughs>